Oh, there we go. Oh, it's already recording. Fabulous. That's helpful. It started doing that. Right, slowly we'll see people uh, ticking in. Hello, everyone. There we go. It always takes a few minutes to just authenticate. So uh, welcome, everyone. I can see the numbers ticking up with people joining us. Going to get everything open and ready. Lovely. Welcome. Hello, everyone joining. Just while we wait for people to join, uh, we generally ask just to check the functionality um, of uh, the Zoom. Uh, if you want to pop in the chat, uh, whereabouts in the world uh, you're joining us from, that's always nice for us to know where you are, um, but also checks everything's working because sometimes the settings play up a little bit. Janan is in uh, France uh, at the moment. So we're actually in different places as well. Uh, perfect. Hi, Malik from in Pakistan. Uh, Ben's in the States. Lovely. Depending on where you are, I'm thinking it might be quite early for you. <laughs> so good morning. Uh, Kate's in the Philippines. I'm actually at home um, just outside of London today Dara you're at home as well aren't you that's right I'm in South London today <laughs> oh so opposite side to me and oh, right. them's in the office so one of us <laughs> is actually there at CCLS <laughs> uh, Philippines India lovely it's always nice when you see uh people come from uh all over the world because it's really reflective um of our demographic of students as well so We'll just give it a minute and then we'll get started just with introductions and I'll explain a little about um, how the webinar will run. One of my favourites, Charlotte, was delivering a workshop and gentleman was in the Arctic. So I don't oh, wow. know the Arctic before. <laughs> so there Gosh. we go. <laughs> uh, Angela's also in India, Tanya from in Kenya. Fabulous. Uh, my my other half, my boyfriend was actually um, over in Kenya a uh, week before last for a conference. Uh, nice. He was saying how great it was. He said that he could move there. Oh, uh, he good. absolutely loved it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's actually his third time in uh, Nairobi. So he's been there a few times, but he thought it was great. He was like, <laughs> we should move there. Yes. <laughs> Remote working, Tanya, we can fine. do a swap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I can see we've got quite a few people. So we'll get started and people tend to join as we go along. So I'll just start uh, with some introductions and um, a bit of background how the webinar will run. So just a big welcome to everyone. Um, my name is Charlotte Burton. I am the marketing manager uh, for the Centre for Commercial Law Studies um, at Queen Mary. And I run this series of webinars, which run throughout the year. Um, and all the different webinars which you can sign up to that take place throughout the year um, are generally on different topics um, to give you an idea and an insight to um, the facilities um, and services that are available to you um, when you come and study with us at um, Queen Mary um, and particularly at CCLS. So today's session um, is all about what we call beyond the LLM. So um, thinking about careers, employability, um, and we've got the team here today uh, who support you with that. So um, the session will run and we're going to go through each different area. So Dara is here from our careers team um, and Oslem and Janana from uh, Q Legal. And then we're going to have a very short bit at the end uh, where I'm just going to cover a bit about our alumni services that we have as well. Um, we encourage you, please, to ask questions. Um, we'll save a bit of time at the end uh, for Q&A. So if you want to ask questions as we go along, you're very welcome to. However, we'll wait until the end to answer the questions um, rather than just cutting in and, and making it a bit disruptive. Um, but please use the chat or the Q&A function that we've got there and we will monitor that as we go along. Um, if there's a question that's very specific, and we might answer that during the presentations so that um, instead of saving it to the end and we'll type that out to you, um, or we might wait 
and uh, and uh, answer it at the end. So if our, your question hasn't been answered yet, please don't worry. It's just because we might be saving it um, because it's probably beneficial to everyone listening as well, rather than us typing an answer for you. So that's my uh, introductory spiel over. Um, should we go around and introduce ourselves and then we'll get into the presentation? So Dara, would you like to go first? Yes. OK, thank you very much, Charlotte. And hello, everybody. Lovely to have you on the call. Um, so my name is Dara Vexter. I'm a solicitor. Um, I'm one of the careers consultants at the Centre for Commercial Law Studies. Um, just to give you a bit of a background to my legal background, I spent five years at a large international law firm and then 25 years as an in-house lawyer um, running a small team dealing with non-contentious matters. So I have a vast range of legal experience, which I hope to make use of when I'm talking to you students. And, and I'll go into a bit more detail about the careers um, support we provide you with. With, but that's just me. Thank you. Lovely. Uh, Oslem, you're next round on my screen. Do you want to go next? Yeah, hello everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Um, I'm Oslem. I'm a recent graduate from Queen Mary's um, LLM. Um, my specialism uh, was IP, um, intellectual property. And I'm from Turkey, but now I'm in the central London in our office at Kiwigo. Um, I was an extern I'm part of QWiggle and now joined as a project coordinator for Future of Law program. And yeah, that's it from me. And Janan. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Janan, and I'm also an alumni from Queen Mary. Um, I did QWiggle as well the year before Oslem. And so now, like her, I work uh, running or helping run one of the programs at our law clinic, which we'll discuss later in the webinar. Um, but yeah, I did my master's at Queen Mary, and then I was in London before that, doing my undergrad in law. Um, so yeah, thanks for coming, everyone. Fabulous, thank you. So we'll get into the presentations. Um, Dara, we'll go with you first. I will just share my screen. There we go. And I think, oh, I can see you, so. Oh, you can see me, okay. wonderful. Yes. We can see what we thought of. Okay. okay. Right. <laughs> Over to you. Over to me. Thank you very much. So this um, part of the webinar is about what the careers um, service can, um, how we can help and support you while you're doing your master's and beyond, because we do offer our support for three years after you've graduated, which a lot of students do found very useful. Okay, Charlotte. <clears throat> Next slide, as they say. Thank you. So just to introduce the team. So Professor Anne Flanagan, you can see on the screen there, she is um, our sort of professional academic um, careers coordinator for the centre um, and has a vast, um, you know, a lot of experience. Um, she's been uh, teaching at the centre for a long time and she's very keen to ensure that students get a real insight into the world of work after um, the masters and to equip you with the skills you need to enable you to get the positions. So Anne is a great supporter of careers and it's great that she is our professor leading the team. So I've just introduced myself as one of the careers consultants and another lady who jo joined the team recently called Sarah Singh. She's also um, a careers consultant as well. And we also have Lynn, who's the career mentoring and work experience officer. So Lynn organizes the mentoring scheme, which I'll talk about a bit in a moment, and also um, sends you details of all the internship work experience opportunities that we find and to try and encourage you to take up these opportunities while you're doing your master's and to try and help you um, to give you the resources to enable you to find positions after the master's. OK, thank you. So the mentoring and work experience, this is what um, the program that Lynn runs. So we have this postgraduate law mentoring program. Um, it's an online application. Um, Lynn gives a lot of information at induction and throughout the first semester to help you to make the application. And normally it closes about the 1st of December. So it gives you a fair amount of time to get into Queen Mary, get used to your course, and then think about applying for the program. It's a program that allows students to connect with legal practitioners. Uh, a lot of the mentors we have on the scheme are very senior, either senior lawyers or senior in their companies. Um, they're real um, sector leaders in some cases. So it's an ideal opportunity for you as a student to be able to meet up with these mentors, maybe once a month, once every two months for face to face meetings. They help often with applications, CVs and general career advice. So it is an ideal opportunity to meet people who are leaders in their field. We 
The programme provides with networking opportunities um, and practical insights into the UK and international legal marketplace. So they have events where you can do networking. So you can network with your mentor and other mentors and also network with your fellow mentees as students do come from all over the world and students are often qualified lawyers in their home jurisdiction. So may have already got a few years post qualification experience already. And throughout the programme, as I say, you can receive support from mentors covering a whole range of things, um, including mock interviews even. So it's a fantastic scheme and we really recommend to students that when they arrive, it's a good idea to apply and then hopefully get a mentor. Um, Lynn also sends out a bi-weekly employability newsletter. She lets you know of opportunities about available work experience opportunities, um, networking and careers events and mentoring and other experiences. Um, often firms will email to say, oh, we have some data privacy roles. Would you kindly send these to your students? Or we have people who've graduated from the LLM program. They like our students and they encourage our students to apply to their firms. So it's quite nice to continue the relationship. And then we have work experience programs, short internships or externships, um, some of which are part of the Q Legal program that you'll be hearing about shortly. Thank you, Shala. So we do our very best to help you um, and you can access our support by firstly booking a one to one appointment, which we either do face to face or on teams, depending on um, availability. Um, and it's 25 minute appointments, so it's quite a long period of time. And in that appointment, you can discuss anything you really want to on the career or career journey, whether it is a CV or a cover letter or just some career guidance as to opportunities that are available in the UK legal market or in the international legal market. So it's a real chance for you to come along and talk to us and just say, you know, what it is you'd like to find out about and we can help you and direct you in the right direction. If you get an interview, which hopefully a lot of the students do, we then have an hour into practice interview slot with myself or my other careers consultant. And that gives a real chance for me to ask some probing questions, for you to rehearse the answers to the questions in a very calm environment so that by the end of the hour, you feel fully prepared to go on to your practice interview. And a lot of the students I've dealt with have found a very invaluable experience and has helped them to secure some positions. So we also um, provide professional skills workshops, for example, how to prepare your CV and cover letter, how to do well at interview, how to make sure a LinkedIn profile looks absolutely super. Um, and we also arrange for employer events. So last week, for example, we had an alumni panel who came to our uh, Centre for Commercial Studies. It was in the lecture theatre. We had about 100 students attending and four alumni. Um, one was in private practice, um, two were in-house lawyers and one was a paralegal in an IP department. Um, and they talked for about an hour about their experiences, their career paths, their tips for students. So I chaired the questions. And then after the um, session, we had a networking event where the panelists joined the students. And so students were able to practice with their networking skills and many connected with the alumni on LinkedIn to hopefully continue the conversation. So it was an ideal opportunity for students to really gain an insight as to what you can do once you've done your LLM. We have a very comprehensive PG Law Careers Guide, which is on our online platform, which is about 75 pages. So we don't expect you to read it the minute you arrive, but it's very much a document that you can dip into. It has template CVs, it has work experience opportunities, um, all sorts of um, information about potential careers in the law or alternative careers in the law. But it's a very good resource that's there for you throughout your studies. And there are also other resources on the PG Law Careers page, we upload slides from workshops, often from events. When we have firms come in to talk, they have comprehensive slides. They also go on there um, and other information. We make announcements on there about upcoming events. So you're always um, given a bit of a heads up as to what's happening. Thank you, Charlie. So the careers and enterprise support involves advice, guidance on a wide range of topics. Um, as I mentioned, you can book an appointment. We're very jazzy with our QR codes now to gain access to resources. Um, all sorts of information is available on our Central Careers page as well. So next page, Sarah, thank you. Um, so just this gives you a little bit of an example of what the web page looks like. Um, the Careers and Enterprise Department is a central department in Queen Mary, but as a student at CCLS, you have opportunity to make use of all the resources there. For example, 
There are all sorts of um, pieces of information on CVs. You can practice psychometric tests. A lot of um, graduate jobs involve uh, a number of these tests. So it's a good idea to try to practice them before you take them um, and all sorts of other information that you might find very useful. Thank you. So here we go with just another example of some of the online resources we have. We have our industry guides, of which law would be one of them, um, application advice, the tests I mentioned, interview advice, all sorts of things you can just browse through and you will find that they are quite um, helpful. Thank you. So this just gives you a little overview of some of the events we've recently had. I mentioned an alumni panel recently, but we also have events where our law firms come to speak at the Centre for Commercial Law Studies. So this term so far, we had Hogan Lovells early in the term, a very large international law firm. Um, they gave a very good presentation about what they're looking for, what they, their practice areas are, and then an opportunity for questions at the end. So students found that very helpful to be able to talk to the graduate recruiter from the firm. Um, Eversheds came, I think, a couple of weeks ago, another international law firm. They've recruited from Queen Mary CCLS alumni in the past. Um, and there again, their slides were up, um, loaded onto the Moodle or the page. So you can see um, the details of how you apply there. Um, but it was a very interesting session. And there again, lots of students were given time to ask questions. Um, we also have um, University of Law or BPP, which are law providers of the SQE course, which is the Solicitors Qualifying Examination course come to talk. We're having one early next term to give students an insight and into the new S Solicitors Qualification exam, which has also taken over from the Qualifying Lawyers Transfer Test, which you may have heard of if you're an overseas qualified lawyer. Thank you. Um, another example of some events we've run, we did an in-house law panel. Um, that's always interesting because some um, alumni do go straight into house roles or some go into private practice and then move into in-house role after a couple of years. Um, and another event which I particularly enjoyed was one actually during COVID called Practicing Law Around the World, where we managed to get the time zone just about right. I think it was midday. And so we had um, Latham Watkins, Beijing, Linklater's New York, k l Gates, Singapore, just to give it a, um, an overview of different law firms and their different offices and the sort of work they undertake. Thank you. We have a course representative program, which is great for opportunity. I do encourage students to become their course representative in their specialism because then they can organize talks and discussions um, and then they have an opportunity to network with the lawyers at the particular firms they're interested in to invite them to come and speak to the Queen Mary students. So that's another opportunity where you can really get involved and then you can get quite um, involved with your, your director or academic lead to arrange joint events. So that's something I would always recommend to students. OK, thank you, Charlotte. So that's a very quick overview. But just to say we are there uh, to support students, to increase their employability skills through our workshops, to give them opportunity to meet alumni who are working in the profession and to come to events and do networking. And also we do offer the three year support after graduation. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you. Um, it's quite helpful for me to have a bit of a refresher <laughs> as well about the career side of things. I always think I always say to students um, when I meet them that what's great about CCLS is that you get dedicated uh, careers support in-house. Um, it's not a shared resource with everyone else. You guys are just for law, which is amazing and not something that you come across very often. So we're very um, lucky to have uh, the careers team um, at CCLS for us. So thank you, Dara. Um, Jinan Oslem, I'm not sure who's uh, sharing, but I can pass over to you guys. Thank you. Perfect. Are you able to see my presentation? Uh, yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, so hi everyone again, I'm Janan and I work for Key Legal with Oslem um, on our various programs, which we'll explain to you throughout the presentation. Um, essentially the point of Key Legal at CCLS is to give students work experience um, while they're studying. Um, so Oslem is gonna talk a bit about why that's more difficult in the UK than it can be in some other jurisdictions. Um, but yeah, it's just a way for you to get work experience and to work with real clients. Yeah, so let's start by uh, introducing Q Legal. So what is Q Legal? 
Uh, we are an award-winning pro bono commercial law clinic. We provide legal assistance and support to tech startups and entrepreneurs. And our main aim is to uh, give you opportunities to aim to bridge the gap between the academic and professional experience. So as um, we mentioned before, we're both um, Q Legal students and alumni now. We are now working for Q Legal, but our friends um, also are working from various jobs, including solicitors, and they are uh, we have lots of alumni working with us as our solicitor supervisors. So um, we basically provide a chance to practice your knowledge and gain experience alongside your studies. And we're going to talk through what experience you'll gain later. Yes, and so there's actually two ways you can join Q Legal while you're at CCLS. The main one is by volunteering. So um, we have about 150 students every year who volunteer at Q Legal in three different programs, and that's just um, from October to um, April. And you have to apply for it, but you aren't um, you don't have any exams or assignments for it. Um, just your volunteering duties, and then we also have a training, a month of training at the very beginning of the of the program um, to kind of get you immersed in the experience and also um, to get exposure to a lot of our partners. And the other way you can join Q Legal is through a module. So only 24 students a year can do that because it's capped. Um, and it's capped because it's a very hands-on interactive class. Um, and then you'll also get the chance to work on a real life case with the client and be supervised by a solicitor from one of our law firms. Um, so yeah, those are the two ways. You can only do one of the two um, and they both have different advantages. Um, yes. So um, to give you more insight into kind of how Q Legal works, um, this is just our community. So you can see the different stakeholders we have. Um, and so at the top, you can see it's the Q Legal students. Um, so that's our students now. Like I said, we have 150 of them or 170 with the module. Um, and then on the bottom left, they interact with external lawyers from various law firms or companies. So in-house lawyers um, and they get expertise, insights and opportunities from them. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it's a really great way. We run panel events as well um, to kind of give you that exposure. Um, and then on the right, the bottom right are all the clients we have. So we have startups, entrepreneurs, and creatives. Um, our law clinic, unlike most, I think, is commercial. So we only work with businesses um, instead of individuals, really. Um, and then we also give uh, legal advice on a one-to-many basis, which means we have a large group of clients that we provide advice to at one time. So for example, we go to a, a sixth form college in London and provide kind of workshops for the students. Um, and it's a really great, great way to gain experience on um, how to give legal support in a way that's kind of engaging to an audience and maybe more innovative and modern with the current legal profession. So we have covered what and how, now let's move on to why, why you should join Q Legal. So work experience is very important in the UK while um, recruiting. So employers are looking for the work experience. Um, that's why Queen Mary has a dedicated careers office as Dara um, covered and opportunities like Q Legal. And as it says on the slide, you're unlikely to get an internship in a law firm in the UK, which means it's very hard and competitive to get a vacation scheme or an internship in the UK. That's why you need us. <laughs> Um, Q Legal offers you a similar opportunity and helps you with the employability. So during your internships, um, so sorry, during your Q Legal experience, you'll gain um, an opportunity, like you'll gain experience similar to a law internship, basically. And also, um, as as we said on the, I'll I'll start with C V one, which is a very um, important one as I assume um, so it's a way to impress your employers something extra alongside your studies uh, so you'll show that you gained a uh, practical experience alongside your studies and you'll use your knowledge and skills to help others which we call um, this giving back uh, to the public um, providing legal service on one to many basis 
and you will learn from new opportunities um, that we'll cover our programs in a minute. And you'll make friends, uh, you'll join our alumni community and you'll make lots of friends. You'll develop your professional skills because you'll be working with uh, professionals, supervisors, solicitors and externals, our clients. And um, you'll focus on entrepreneurs and innovation, which is which are very current topics in the current legal practice. You'll build your professional contacts in the UK. Networking is very important while getting um, a job. And finally, you will add context to your academic studies. As we said, um, it will help your employability. Also, it will help um, your studies as well. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna to talk to you about our programs really quickly. So we have three. I definitely recommend going on our website and learning more about them just because, yeah, it's very, I can't describe all the different things you can do in them in this webinar, but we do a lot of different um, interesting activities and opportunities. Um, but if you've done a legal clinic before, I think our legal advisory is the most common or most, the one you've probably encountered before. So in that one, we have um, a real client that you interview um, to get information on what they need. You'll be working on a um, online case management system, and you'll also be working with a solicitor who'll be reviewing your drafts and helping you come up with with advice for your client. Um, and that's 20 days um, over the course um, that you work over. Um, and yeah, at the end, your client will have a written legal advice letter by yourself. Um, and you do one to two per year. Um, the externships program is the one that Oslam and I did while we were Key Legal students. And that is where you're placed one day a week for six months in a startup. So we work with a lot of incubators who provide us with these startups who are innovative um, and you'll give them again, legal support. And also you can work on business development tasks. So for example, when I was in my externship, I ran a beta test for the company, which obviously isn't legal, but it was still super interesting um, and nice way to kind of understand the commercial aspects of working in-house in that kind of role. Um, and then our biggest program is the Future of Law program. And within that, we have a lot of different activities you can do. Um, we run a podcast where students um, kind of produce, edit, write the script, do everything for the podcast. And they invite kind of high, uh, professionals in the legal industry that they're interested in interviewing. Um, that's also on our website if you wanna listen to it. Um, we also do a public legal education stream under that program where, like I said, you go to, for example, a sixth form college and you teach to a large group of students. And then we also have kind of ad hoc projects for individual clients that um, change every year, but we've worked with big organizations and big law firms, helping them kind of use legal design to be more innovative in the way they provide legal services, which is a really, I love that program a lot. Um, yeah, but definitely go on our website if you need more information because we have a lot more on there. Um, like I said, we work with a lot of partners. These are just a few of them. We've already added more this year that aren't on here. Um, but you'll probably, if you've looked at the legal landscape in the UK, you'll probably recognize a lot of the firms. So we have Ropes and Gray, Morgan Lewis, Kid Rapine, Wigan, um, Sidley Bloomberg. And then we also work with um, companies who have in-house lawyers like Bloomberg or um, Google, Visa, Airbnb. Um, and then we have also um, a lot of accelerators or incubators who provide us with startups as clients or even just help us like organize panel events or network. Um, so that would be Enterprise Nation or Imperial Enterprise Lab, for example. Um, but like I said, we've already added so many this year. Um, so you'll be exposed to a lot of different lawyers or businesses and also people in a lot of different kind of industries or positions, which is super interesting. As I'll talk about our opportunities that we offer alongside uh, our programs. So you can participate in National Pro Bono Week, the Legal Bank and the Legal Walk, where we basically raise awareness and money for providing legal service and legal support. And uh, you can showcase your skill uh, through our annual content writing competition, um, which has a focus on tech, law and innovation. This is generally supervised by an, um, a law firm and our uh, solicitor supervisors. And you can join our socials, our holiday party is coming up. Um, and also if you have a, um, 
graduation celebration every year at the end. And of course, you'll become a Q-Legal alumni after graduation and you'll be in our network for the future. And that's it from us. Now I think we can move on to the Q&A. Yes. Yeah, so um, yeah, that was our presentation. Definitely recommend looking at the website. Um, and yeah, like I said, we were both alumni. And I think what's nice about Q-Legal is you just get that community, an extra community within Queen Mary, um, which, yeah, everyone keeps in touch, definitely. So it's super nice. Lovely. Thank you both. I think it's also nice to hear that you're both uh, alumni um, of CCLS and you're working in Q-Legal. So nice to know there's opportunities available for the students um, as well after you graduate. So just going to do a couple of slides just from me, but be very quickly um, on alumni. Oh, my mouse has disappeared. One second. Um, so last bit of presentation and then we'll be on um, to question and answer. So just last few slides. Um, so um, alumni um, at CCLS is a, a really fantastic um opportunity for you as students once you finish with us and uh, similarly to uh, our careers team we have a dedicated alumni team um, based at CCLS um, because of the sheer amount of alumni that we have um, so when you finish uh, your studies with us it doesn't matter what program you've done you have access to the alumni network uh, which is a global network um, of your peers that you've studied with but also past alumni um, from over 100 different countries um, for where students come from so you can see on the right here some pictures um from meetups actually the one on the top right was in toronto just last week um the top left um julia one of our academics was in career and she met with the students there and the bottom one was from the uh annual meetup in bangkok um earlier this year and actually uh janus cocker is our director was out there uh, for that which was lovely um so uh lots of events that you have access to um but also uh, a network available to you and actually we also have a closed uh, linkedin group that you are able to access as well which is a nice uh, network which shows all opportunities that you still have available to you um, as alumni of ccls but also if you want to share something on there you can do to your network also and i think as dara said uh by a a lot of our alumni and um, when they're working in firms particularly in London get in touch with us and say oh we're uh, we're looking for students for this as well which is which is really nice um that uh, students uh, go on work somewhere and then they make a really good impression that makes uh, companies want more students from Queen Mary which is lovely so we have currently 28 uh, alumni national chapters so depending on where you are um, around the world uh, there is a chapter for it um, and uh, within that there's the different committees um, which run events throughout the year um, so you would automatically become part of this if you want to be um, as well as the overall chapter um, and you'll also have access to events um, that happen um, so you get lots of events that take place while you're with us but also events afterwards so this is just the list of what's coming up actually in the next uh, couple of months or month or so so lots of Christmas meetups really um, but uh, you can see that the Nigeria chapter are running an event on sustainability we have different meetups um, there's different events that chapters run um, that they want to present on, uh, which is available to you um, as a CCLS alumni. Um, but also, if you're interested in going along to any of these um, events, such as the sustainability event, um, you're very welcome to as a prospective student just to find out a bit more um, when you're having a look. So these are just some of the bits uh, that are available to you um, as alumni. Um, and I suppose Jinan and Oslem, as uh, alumni yourself, <laughs> opportunities to come and work at CCLS as well. So that's the few just tiny little bits um, about alumni. Um, so we'll move on to the Q&A now. I can see there's quite a few questions in there, a couple I've marked um, to answer. So uh, the one at the beginning was about, uh, was in the careers side, so about applying for the programmes. Um, that happens when students start, doesn't it, Dara? Yes, so we have an induction um, a couple of weeks um, where you have lots of different um, 
talks, one of which will be on careers, one of which will be probably on Clue Legal. Um, and then you'll get to know how what the setup is once you're here. So that's the first initial introduction to careers. And then we'll point you in the right um, direction for all the resources that you need and be able to book appointments with us. Lovely. Thank you. And the someone's also asked, are those online resources from the Career Service, are they available publicly or do they? Yes, I have just available? checked. Our Queen Mary <laughs> Careers Enterprise website is up there, so you can have a look at it. The only things you can't access are whether you want to register for some test practice, but to look at what resources there are, feel free to go there, do have a look, and hopefully you'll see lots of exciting bits of information that will be useful for you. Lovely, thank you. Um. So someone's asked about, uh, oh, that's, um, it's a follow-on for something that I've answered. So someone was asking about um, the different programmes available. So an MSc or an LLM. Um, if It doesn't matter what programme you're on, does it, Janan Oslem, if you want to apply for Q League or does it? Is there entry requirements? No, there aren't. So I think is it, if it's the IP MSc, um, that's completely fine. We have, I think, two students this year on it. Um, the only thing is, I don't, I can't remember, but I think some of the courses aren't a full year. Or they might be half a year. Full yeah, year. some are nine months, I think. Right. So you, basically you have to be available from October to April and enrolled from then um, during those dates. So that's the only requirement. Um, but otherwise, we have an application system for everyone. And as long as you show motivation, it's completely fine. Um, we also have a student who's doing the human rights LLM because we have a human rights startup. So Perfect. That's really helpful. And actually, someone's asked about um, is alumni at CCLS for all LLM grads? Yes, it doesn't. Um, we're not particular <laughs> about which um, LLMs you're from. Of course, if you have studied with us at Queen Mary, you also get access to the wider alumni network. Um, but we're obviously talking about CCLS here, but it doesn't matter what program you're on. You still get access to um, the alumni network um, just by studying with us. Um, okay, uh, there's a couple of questions just about admissions, which I'll just cover very quickly. As part of the admissions process to LLM, do you accept only uh, apostled uh, education documents? The best thing to do is to speak to our admissions team. Um, unfortunately, none of us here are from the admissions team. Um, I can advise on a few bits and pieces, but I would need to check that. So I'm going to just put in... Um, in reply to you, uh, the email address which you can get in touch with us, and I will have a look at that for you. Um, uh, okay, what are the opportunities of LLM, LLM in IPR? Does that mean intellectual property? Yes. Dara's nodding. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I would say um, quite a lot, really. I mean, intellectual property covers a huge range, obviously. Um, you can have intellectual property law or trademarks or patents or all sorts of areas. Um, the best thing would be to discuss, you know, when you arrive, what sort of career path you're interested in. And um, we do have an awful lot of alumni who do the technology, media and telecoms course, which means you will find a lot of alumni working in the area of IP. So that's something to talk about. Perfect. Um, Janan, do you know, or Oslem, do you know at all if we've had any students doing regulation and compliance on QLeague? Or I guess it depends if they apply as well. I think I think we do. I think maybe Oslem can answer better than me. Um, yeah, we do. Um, we do at the PLE. So, so Future of Law program, uh, we do have um, regulation and compliance students. And also we do have a mentoring scheme for um, for that program as well. Perfect. Um, Janan and also, while we haven't got any questions at the moment, I'm sure more will come in. Um, do you have any things that you would say as an alumni in terms of what your experience was like uh, on Q Legal? Or I'm now using you because you're alumni and you're here. <laughs> Aside from Q Legal, from your kind of time at CCLS that you would share, perhaps. Um, I could add on a point that Dara mentioned, actually. I was a course yeah. representative myself um, for laws, and I would definitely suggest it for uh, for various reasons. But yeah, it would definitely give you an opportunity to um, reach out to um, solicitors and uh, various uh, professionals so that you can bring them to a workshop to CCLS or you can arrange um, tours to courts 
Um, and yeah, definitely would suggest being a course representative. Um, that's it from my side. And I, I was an extern during my studies and um, I was placed in a startup, a software startup. And um, because my specialism was IP, um, I was giving not like qualified legal advice, but I was helping with their IP and patents, uh, especially. Um, and I, I did my dissertation on patents, which was very helpful to see how this actually uh, being done in real life um so yeah it helped me with my studies and then um I know that a lot of my friends mentioned their key legal experience in their interviews and they wanted to learn more and more about it um, um yeah that's it for me maybe do not do <laughs> yeah um so for me obviously I'm really I love doing key legal and that was super big part of my LLM but I also did the mentoring program, which I really loved. I had very niche interests and I, they somehow found like a very good match for me, which was super nice. Um, and then the other thing I would say that's super nice about CCLS is that there's always, we have a really good events team who helps all the academics organize various events. So I got to do so many things um, while at CCLS and meet so many experts and get exposed to so many different areas of law. And just by the events and a lot of them are also quite expensive but then for students they're free a lot of the time or heavily discounted um so definitely go on the event event bright page and like try and join as many things as you can and um, that was one of my favorite parts and i still we still go to events like Oslem went to a book launch last week <laughs> and i went to an art law lecture as well so yeah it's super a nice part of the experience Perfect. And actually, you're both obviously were international students. Um, someone's asked about is Q Legal kind of helpful for that? They're talking about visas, but I wouldn't worry too much about answering about that. But um, did you find it was helpful in terms of being an international student, you know, working at Q Legal to look for work afterwards? Obviously, you're with us, though, but still. <laughs> Um, so I actually did my undergrad in London, but I didn't, I hadn't, I didn't really do that much work experience. So I think it was a very, it was so helpful to be able to do work experience in an environment where you have a lot of support from what I've heard about, um, like vacation schemes and stuff. It's quite daunting. Um, but I think what's nice with Q Legal is that you really, like, if you ever have a struggle or an issue, you can get help for it immediately. And the team is very supportive. Um, so it feels like a very safe environment to do, to try something new. Um, and then a lot of our students in Q Legal, we have a huge age range um, and a lot have been working for years and they do Q Legal and they're all, they think it's like, it, they learn a lot from it. Um, and the UK is just a very different working environment um, from the rest of the world, which is normal, but it's nice to kind of get insight into it where you can still kind of make mistakes and be in a learning environment. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I want to add one more thing. Yes, so, um, I did my undergrad in Turkey. So it was my first um, international experience in the UK uh, doing my LLM here. So we have trainings as Q Legal. So we basically teach how to be professional in the UK atmosphere. And it's even changed in English because, in like, so, for example, in American um spellings or like American practice it changes how you approach to people in the UK it's different and it's basically different in every jurisdiction um every country of jurisdiction or legalese <laughs> but yeah um it changes so it depends on where you are and I think uh, getting these trainings and learning how to approach to people how to build your network is very useful for um your experience in general for studies, for approaching to professors, approaching to um, solicitors and your em future employers. So I think those trainings, we didn't stress the trainings that we're um, delivering, but the trainings were especially uh, very helpful for me. And can I just add thank you, Osram and Janan, but uh, Charlotte, when I see students and they say they're on the Q Legal Programme, which is obviously wonderful, I do say to them, well, keep a note of all the things you've done because putting it on your CV is so invaluable that shows you have some UK legal work experience. So it really does help students when they're looking for those first positions. Thank you, Dara. And you might be able to help a little bit with this question uh, that's come in. So someone's asked about um, kind of insight into the, the current landscape in terms of uh, UK recruitment I know um, 
our graduate outcomes are very high in terms of students being in employment within six months of them finishing with us. But you obviously deal with students all the time looking for work. What to, what do you think about kind of the current landscape at the moment? Right. Well, you know, it is challenging. Um, it's challenging for everybody. But what I say to our students is if you're very resilient and you follow advice and you do your research and you do your Q-Legal and your mentoring scheme, there are opportunities out there. And so when we had the alumni panel last week, there was a student who finished her course in January and had her first paralegal role in an IP um, organisation in the April. And she was doing exceptionally well. And there are plenty of other students who do the same. It's not easy you have to work hard but we're here to support you in that journey um so you know it's definitely possible and also international students bring so much with them a lot of the law firms particularly international law firms you know really welcome the experience that people bring from um overseas and the language skills so very much so there are opportunities there fabulous thank you and um, I know students, it's not, you know, you say about welcoming international students, but a lot of our students do go on to work here in the UK, obviously visa appropriately, but um, you we do see students the visa. Go. Yeah, so <laughs> there we again, do... we have the special student academic services, don't we, Charlotte, that do a lot of support mm. to international students, a lot of um, events, workshops and one-to-one -one appointments, I think. So there is a lot of support for visas, queries, et cetera. Yes, definitely. Um, I will actually just put um, the email address in the chat here for everyone. I have sent it to a few people that have asked for specific questions. If you have any um, uh, specific questions at all um, that you want to ask, please do free. feel free to get in touch. I've put the inquiries email address um, in the chat now and you'll come through to either myself or my colleague um, who will, can direct your questions um, elsewhere if need be. So it looks like we've answered all the questions, which obviously means we've been very efficient in what we've said. So um, if there isn't anything else, I'm going to wrap up there. Um, there was a question in the chat about if there's any specific webinars coming up um, about programs, and there absolutely is. Um, please keep an eye on your inbox. Um, in the new year, we're doing a whole um, series of webinars, um, particularly for particular programs. So you can find out a bit more about programs particularly. Uh, specifically sorry um, with um, an academic from there as well so please keep an eye on your inbox and um, we will send out a recording of this as well um, but just say a big thank you for attending thank you to uh, Dara Osem Janam for your time today um, and I'm sure we'll have lots of interest um, in the careers and Q legal uh, come September next year thank you Charlotte thank you thank Susan. you everyone bye, bye bye take care have a good day you too bye bye, bye, -bye.